what? I looked at Erica Cruz up there. I think she's, you know, she's ice cold. And I'm a bit worried for Amanda Serrano in this fight. And actually, as much as I want Taylor Serrano 2 to happen, Erica Cruz is our fight. So I'm gunning for an Erica Cruz victory on Saturday night and a big upset. And I think it's going to be a toe-to-toe walk. Eddie, with the situation with Croke Park, does it make more sense maybe if Cruz did win to do that in the three arena and then look maybe in September Look, for I, Serrano know, I, again? I woke up this morning to national news in Ireland. You know, they're talking about it on the mainstream media. I make one thing clear, you know, there's some very clever wording around from their side saying that the rental is only a little bit more expensive than Wembley. It's not the rental, it's the costs required that they require us to implement to stage the fight there. Um, I'm not having a go at them. I'm just saying for what the fighters want to make and what I want to pay them in the fight, it's not possible. So we'll carry on those conversations. There's been a lot of people reaching out today, but it's all irrelevant. That fight's not signed yet. And ultimately, until we see what happens on Saturday night, then we'll look at the future. Is there still a possibility, though, that it does go in Croke Park, or are you saying categorically, no, it's not going to At this stage, May 20th is Katie Taylor's next fight date. We run out of time. So we've made our moves to go to the free arena, but there has been national uproar and we'll see what happens over the next few days. Eddie France. I know better be able to agree the past weekend or last weekend, I should say. Um, do you think he's still the same exact fighter? Or he's, he's 38 now. Do you yeah. think he's slowing down a little bit? No, I think he's the same exact fighter. You know, people say that better be able to be slow. People say that his footwork's not great. I actually dis- disagree. I think he's fast. I think his feet work, footwork is unbelievable. I think he's very clever. I think he breaks you down. I just think that Dimitri Bivol beats him. Eddie Francis and Garner, you spoke yesterday on the MMA Hour. You are now potentially exploring an option. Want to speak with his team and maybe bring him on board? No, I was just saying it for the MMA Hour, to be honest with you. Um, no, look, I spoke to Francis and Garner. He's a fine gentleman. Would love to work with him. Uh, I told him that you know you have to navigate this choppy sea of boxing. And uh, we would love to look at an Anthony Joshua fight. He's got the Tyson Fury fight as well. Ultimately... You know, AJ's ambition is to become world heavyweight champion again. That doesn't involve Francis and Garnu, but if there isn't an opportunity to fight for the world heavyweight title, we would be willing to explore that this summer. It's a mega fight. Um, obviously, it's a fight that would, would create huge attention worldwide. But first things first, Francis and Joshua, April 1st, O2 Arena, press conference next week. Away from AJ, do you may not maybe look at him as an opponent first things first, like a, a Derek Chisora or a no, Dillian White? I think Francis and Garnu will want to and should want to move into the biggest fight possible. And there's only two of them, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. They're the biggest fights out there for him. Maybe Deontay Wilder, but Dillian White would take that fight. But I think he's going to look to maximise his position, make as much money as possible, and he wants the biggest fights out there. Is there a struggle with that, that if or most people will say when he loses, if he goes straight into a Tyson Fury or an AJ, I think, I think he's only really got one shot at the... No, I think if you lose from there, you come back, you can potentially rebuild, but this is his opportunity. And, and you know, from speaking to him, I think that's what he wants to do. What do you think of you know, Francis' skills overall, just his striking ability? I think at the end of the day, he's not going to be able to compete with the skills of a boxer but one thing he can do is punch he's very heavy handed so he has to fight a style that he has a chance you know like a fury fight is very awkward for him he could be messed around and I don't think that's the right style for him an AJ fight a Wilder fight a Dillian White fight where people are prepared to trade and, and can get hit by heavy shots it makes it more compelling has it history in the female boxing in your opinion uh, my opinion yes uh, I've been making history in female boxing for a long time we're doing it again on Saturday night we're not here to tick boxes we're not here just to look good by putting female boxing on female boxing is here by its own ability and its own demand you know we'll be sold out in here on Saturday night we just sold out the big room for Taylor Serrano these are great fights great champions and we'll be investing heavily in women's boxing moving Eddie, forward. We saw, we saw uh, Frank Warren announce Joyce Zhang today, obviously yeah. Zhang, somebody you work with, yeah. talks about making that fight, how easy or difficult was it at times? Yeah, it was, you know, again, a great relationship with George Warren. Uh, they wanted to make that fight. Um, Zhang had a situation with us where we had matching rights on his fights moving forward. Uh, I spoke to George Warren. Zhang wanted to make that fight. Um, I was happy with the offer that was made to Zhang. Uh, me and George got the final bits over the line. I think he's a really good fighter. This seems to be, for Zhang at least, a much more of a, a win-win scenario for him. If he wins, he beats somebody in Joe Joyce, who everybody sees as a top five heavyweight and cements himself back in there, whereas Joyce, not necessarily the same. But where does Zhang go if he's successful? I mean, he's in a great position. Look, he's, you know, he's at the back end of his career, but he can really punch. I mean, I think everybody, including Zile Zhang, uh, is going to struggle with the work rate of, of Joe Joyce. And Joe Joyce will overrun Zile Zhang, but he can really punch with the backhand. And Joe Joyce will be open, as always, to get hit flush on the chin. 
It's just people talk about how good Joe Joyce's chin is. He's never really fought a massive puncher other than potentially Daniel Dubois that didn't really hit him on the chin, strangely, in that fight. So I think he's a massive favourite against Zile Zhang. But Zhang can really punch with the backhand. And if he times him onto one, I think he'll be interesting. But obviously Joe is, with his style uh, and against a much older man, he's a big favourite in that fight. The man who last fought, Filip Ergovic, what's the latest with Philip? Um, he's been asked to have an interim world title fight against Andy Ruiz. We'd like to make that fight. Obviously, Ruiz is looking at the Wilder fight as well. We've spoken to Tom Brown. There's some back and forth. I don't think Andy Ruiz will take the fight against Philip Hergovic, but that's what's been ordered, and we're exploring that. Oh, the one from here, Edgar Barlanga. Um, I spoke to him, and he did say to me that he's meeting with Al Heyman today. Do you fancy your chances to land that one, and, and who could we see him? Yeah, no, I, I think Edgar Barlanga... He's a fighter that everybody wants, you know, us, PBC, uh, he obviously was with ESPN, Golden Boy. Um, I think we've got a great plan for Edgar Belanga. We can headline him, we can continue his rise, we continue his popularity, and ultimately we can deliver him the, um, the Canelo Alvarez fight. How which is that happen? He needs to prove against world-class opposition that he's in a position to fight Canelo Alvarez. But it's Mexico against Puerto Rico. It's a massive fight, but he still has to have those fights, and we'll be happy to give him those fights before we look at Canelo Alvarez in May 2024. Can he go in and start headlining the Hulu Theatre here? Absolutely. He's done huge gates here before. He's a big star in the right fights. Edgar Blanger is a headline attraction for sure. Eddie, on Joyce Shang, it's going to probably clash. Do you think he will end up coming back down to 47 or you think it's just like... No, I, I think he's been 147 for a long time. I think he's very tight at the weight. And when you look at the, you know, the, the, the mileage on Errol Spence through the accident, through the, the, the eye operation and stuff like that, it's just going to be harder for him to start making weight. I don't know him personally, so I can't tell you, but I'm just, I believe, I remember seeing him in Sheffield when he made 47, which was years ago. And I'm surprised he's still there. Respect to him and the way that obviously he makes that weight. But I see him moving up, and, and I guess 154 is his future. Yeah, Enjoy you know, Shang. It looks. Uh, so do, what weight class is that going to be? Do, is it going to be 168 or something? C Canelo would like that fight at 175 because he feels that's where he lost before. But uh -huh. Dimitri Bivol wants legacy, and if he wants legacy and belts, and can make 168 safely, which they say he can then maybe we can make that fight at 68 to provide an undisputed opportunity for Dimitri Bivol. But if you ask Canelo Alvarez, he would say probably 175 because that's where I lost. I don't want people to think that I've brought him down. This is not Canelo Alvarez saying, bring him down to 168. This is just a way to maybe make the fight to give Dimitri Bivol more opportunity at Legacy. was come out today and admitted, obviously, uh, the video of him taking Colkin was himself and he apologised to his family and friends. Just your views and opinions on that and what we can do as a support to help fighters post-boxing. Yeah, you know, I don't really want to you know, talk about fighters personal life, but Kel Brook is a fighter that, you know, walks away from the sport and has a big um, hole in his life when you leave boxing or you leave something that you love. And boxing has been Kel Brook's life for years and years and years. And you see that when that buzz leaves you, you know, you can put yourself in a difficult place mentally. Kel Brook is someone we have a huge history with. One thing I'll tell you about Kel Brook is he's a good person with a huge heart and we should all support him and his family should and will support him, of course. Boxing should support him. And, you know, I'm sure that he'll be uh, back on the, the horse and, um, you know, like I said, he's a good man. And uh, he's always had a pure heart. He loves the sport. And listen, maybe you'll see him return to the sport. But most of all, we hope he's happy. Eddie, Joyce Shank. He's always been a great fighter. Like, maybe 15 years now. But, you know, a couple of people are saying that um, he seems to be losing the step. Like, not as great as he used to be. Did you see Do you no, see? I think, I think he's a tremendous... Look, he's been fighting with an injury for the last couple of fights. I don't think he's been at his best. But look at his fights. He fought Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant. Dimitri Bivol, Canelo Alvar uh, and Gennady Golovkin. That's his fault. Like, people say, oh, he's slipping a little bit. No, he's just fighting the very best of the best. And he was carrying an injury as well. 36, 26 pay per view, uh, 32 26 pay per view price point for Mayweather against Aaron Chalmers in the UK. Your fault? <laughs> no. Speechless. Joyce Jang may be clashed with Sheffield. How will that affect your um, viewer numbers? Uh, you know, you never want a, a clash, but ultimately you're going to see it. You've got a, a lot of promoters out there um, staging fights. And, uh, you know, for us, we want to make sure we fill up Sheffield Arena for Dalton Smith. What's, what's the latest with Canelo and Ryder? Uh, we're negotiating that fight with both parties. That fight will take place in America or Mexico. And hopefully we can close it off 
over the next week. Eddie, as someone who's worked with uh, Saudi Arabia, after we're waiting news on Fury Usyk, it seems like it's going to be April. Why do you think that there's been a delay on that? Because the demands of the fighters, um, obviously coming off the back of coming through Ramadan, sort of you know keeps that March date out, and they'd want it through the back of that. I'm not sure whether it will happen in April. Maybe it'll be later. Um, but I hope it happens. You know, it's good to have an undisputed heavyweight championship, and you know. Um, Saudi are really the only ones that can pay that type of money for that fight. Do you think we see it next? Yes, but you never know. Um, Eddie, you're a fan of the UFC and you're a fan of Dana White. So what do you make of the slap fighting competition? I, I'm a big fan of the UFC. I'm a big fan of the UFC business. I'm a big fan of what Dana White has done in the mixed martial arts business. I do not like the slap league. I'm not going to lie to you. I think I cannot believe what I'm watching. I cannot believe it's allowed. I cannot believe that we want our kids to see people striking people without being defended. Everything, boxing's different. Boxing teaches you as a kid to protect yourself, to have respect. You know, we want to promote safety in the sport. This is really sort of just unadulterated violence. And I know that people seem to want to watch stuff like that and broadcasters want to hit numbers. But for me, this is something where someone should step in and say, look, look at the footage here. This is not good for anyone. So as much as I respect those guys, I have to be honest and say, not for me. Why do you think Dana ventured into I that? I don't know. It's a strange one. But, you know, he's a revolutionary. So who knows? Eddie Lawrence. A new Australian heavyweight that you signed yesterday. Just this honey, fantastic fighter. You know, it's a massive signing for us in Australia. Look at our Australian roster right now. Stevie Spark, Liam Paro. Uh, Justice Hooney, Ebony Bridges, Sky Nicholson, um, you've got um, uh, Brock Jarvis, Dempsey McKean. You've got so many great fighters in our Australian roster right now and more coming in Australia. But Justice Hooney is a world-class heavyweight that can go on and really achieve in the division. What's on a Coley leaving Shane McGuigan? I didn't know he had, but I worked he had uh, completely, you know, just bad advice. Josh Boatsy? Uh, what's next for him? Um, we're moving forward with Joshua Boatsy. Uh, we sent him a contract for his latest fight. It should be announced in the next couple of weeks. Matching rights for him Thank after you. this. Yeah. Matching rights for him if he looks to go elsewhere yeah, after this. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We, we've had Josh from the amateurs and, and looking forward to, to working with him in the future. Cheers, Cheers,